Our in-depth coverage of the grand jury decision in Ferguson continues now as we're learning more about the task that the grand jury faced in reaching the decision yesterday. Retired Chief Justice of the Rhode Island Supreme Court, Frank Williams, joins us now with more perspective. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Let's talk a little bit about what is happening this morning. You heard Brian talk about the thousands of pages of documents being released. It is rare to see that evidence so quickly after we hear whether there's an indictment or not, right? Usually it's kept under seal unless the court orders it open, and I think in this case, the sooner the better. Transparency, I think, is what's going to make us understand exactly what the grand jurors heard during their extensive stay. Let's talk a little bit about the process itself. I mean, these grand jurors were uh, did this process for almost three months. I mean, they didn't meet every day, but they would meet at least once a week. And there was a lot of evidence to go through, not only documents, but photographs. Tell us a little bit more about, more about what they were doing behind these closed doors. Well, the whole idea is to see if there's probable cause that a crime was committed and then decide whether to return a true bill or an indictment or no true bill, no indictment. And these 12 men and women sifted through the testimony, not just the documents, but other evidence that came before them. This is, this is really a prosecutor's tool. The defendant really has, or the purported defendant, really is not putting a defense here. It's whether or not someone uh, committed a crime that they, for which they could be charged. And that's what, that's what they had to determine. Nine people had to decide out of 12 whether or not there was probable cause to issue an indictment. And obviously in the end they decided there was not. And hearing that last night and reading uh, some of the, the articles of the this morning, what was your opinion of the decision? You uh, most likely were not surprised you had told me during the break, Well, right? I'm, I'm a creature of the law, right? I've, I've been in this business for 40 years and I think it's important that people follow the process. And, and we have the best legal system in the world. And th this is a grand jury that took an oath to do the very best they could to sort through all of the evidence and come up with a decision. And I think they did that. The uh, rioting and the destruction of property uh, is really uh, not the American way, even though it's been around our country since our founding. And I think uh, we should get away from this and be a little more discerning and civil when we get a decision that may be unpopular to many people. And again, when we're talking about the, just the, the, the huge amount of evidence in this case, to put it in perspective, are there any Rhode Island cases, in your opinion, that would compare in terms of the volume of evidence that these grand jurors had to go over during these past three months? Well, I think the high-profile high cases, of course, like the Ferguson case, the Von Bulow case is an example that immediately comes to mind. I wasn't on the bench then, but I was practicing law, and I, and I believe that was, uh, that was two trials, really. Uh, so I think you're going to get uh, exponentially, depending on the charges or, the, or what's at stake, uh, that kind of investigation by a grand jury. All right, certainly a lot to go through today, and as Brian mentioned, we do have all of the uh, testimony that these grand jurors looked over on our website. We thank you so much for your perspective and joining us today. Well, thanks for having me. All right, stay with Iowans News for continuing coverage of the grand jury decision in Ferguson Plus. As always, you can get extended coverage online on our website, including photo galleries and all the latest headlines.